A key factor that has been critical to our success at Brio Insurance Group is the fact that we have a great relationship, a partnership with several other business groups in our organization. This is important for you as well. So for example, the Human Resources Department and your internal legal team, for example. Well, let's take HR. When you're partnering with HR, you know, you'll need to do background checks and sometimes credit checks on people that you're interviewing for jobs and for new hires. HR might be responsible for distributing policies. You may use HR to distribute the AUP, the acceptable use policy, and have new employees sign off, hopefully within the first 90 days. Also, HR can be influential at arranging for security awareness training. Maybe this training is going to be done through your intranet servers with something, either something you're streaming from a uh, vendor, or maybe you're producing this training yourself. And if you are, you may actually be using people in your IT department and HR as your own in-house instructors. HR can also help manage corporate phishing campaigns. You're seeing those done a lot. Uh, you're testing your enterprise security. You're testing your end users by going into something. And I'm going to show you this later on in this live lessons where I actually go into Metasploit and create a phishing campaign for to test our internal users. So we may rely on HR for that type of initiative as well. And for policy enforcement. Uh, policy enforcement and maybe needing them uh, for security teams, okay? Or if you have to let somebody go, a privileged insider who's responsible for a data breach, okay? Maybe they're trying to sell something on the dark web. That process of termination will certainly involve HR, but they may also be on an incident response team or maybe a steering committee. And you'll work closely with them uh, as information security managers. Because why? Because security is really all about people and HR is all about people. What about legal? Okay. You'll have an in-house legal department. Maybe you'll have a legal firm. Maybe you'll have both depending upon the scenario. Some large organizations will have an internal legal team, but they may have to go outside and hire a legal firm let's say if there's a huge fine or judgment that's been levied against them, some secondary loss issue involving, let's say, credit card breaches or other intellectual property, they may have to go to an outside law firm. Some of the issues in partnering with legal is, you know, compliance issues. Again, maybe going to some experts in HIPAA compliance or high tech or Sarbanes-Oxley compliance. We might want to think about dealing with legal uh, entities for regulations. You may have outside firms that have expertise in certain regulations. Cybercrime, okay? It may be rare for your in-house legal team who typically works with service level agreements and contracts, hiring and firing and those issues. They may not be cybercrime experts. Often, you can find cybercrime expertise at your insurance company, your insurance provider. And that can also be combined with your partnering with legal as well. Uh, corporate liability, okay? Any type of internal corporate liability or think about a CEO or part of the C-suite or the C-team. Somebody's able to pull off a whaling attack against them and, and maybe get some illegal content onto that CEO system, okay? Or maybe the, the CEO is involved in illegal activities. It happens, okay? They're also going to help us in issues of due care and due diligence. We have to show as an organization from a security standpoint that we are properly implementing life cycles, processes that are based on, let's say, CIS controls, or maybe based on NIST special publications, or maybe we're in partnership with the government or military. We have to show due care of our confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and our due diligence in making sure that we have continual improvement and due diligence in incident response and incident handling. There's also partnering with the executive management or the C-suite, okay? This is often called the C-team as well. And this is, of course, uh, chief something or other, okay? So the, the C-suite is going to be signing off ultimately on your mission statement, on your strategy papers, uh, on your charters that you're going to initiate, maybe for programs and for projects, okay? 
uh, reporting to the C-suite is extremely important, okay? It's a key aspect of integrating with risk treatment because the, the C team will be heavily involved in how you treat or handle risk. And let me just remind you of what I'm talking about here when I say the C-suite, okay? Uh, for example, let's say at Brio, you and I as a CISO are planning on provisioning the Security Operations Center, and so we need executive sponsorship. Okay, so let's say at Brio, we have a network operating center, a NOC, but now we're going to take that and segment it out and have an additional SOC or security operations center. Okay, we're going to build that out as an initiative. It's going to cost money. We have to hire some people. It's going to involve new technology. So we need executive sponsorship, right? The CEO, the CFO, definitely the financial officer, the CIO, information officer, the CTO, technology officer, and you may have other types of C-team members as well.